Friday early on in the show. Derek Turner now joins us, former Baylor defensive lineman on Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports. Derek, thanks for your time. Paul Catalina, Craig, and David Smoke, Sikkim 365 Radio. So uh, I put up a threat. Give me some names of some guys that maybe were under the radar or a little bit maybe underrated or unnoticed. And you weren't unnoticed because your name was brought up. Tell everybody what you're doing right now with your business in Oklahoma, first of all. And have, thanks for your time. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, I'm in the real estate business. We develop residential subdivisions and uh, neighborhoods, and we build uh, houses and office buildings, things of those nature. Been doing that since I got out of school. You were a part of Baylor in the early years, 81 to 85. Grant Taft, of course, was there. Uh, a Southwest Conference All-Defensive End, Second Team All-American, and much, much more. Were you someone that felt like when you were coming out of high school that you had a chance to be that good in college? Uh, you know, not. I guess I just assumed I was. I actually walked on. Um, I had uh, I had an opportunity to. Uh, uh, I, I thought I was going to go to school up here in state, and that didn't work out. So I got to got on the road and and uh, had a couple close friends of my dad's that knew about Baylor that had played there, Jim Daniel and and Jim Lee, and they said, "Hey, you got to go look at it." So uh, I got on the got on a plane with my dad and went down there and took a look and. I fell in love with the place the minute I got off the plane and met Bill Hicks at the first time I, I met him and thought this is the place I needed to be and, and uh, had no idea that walk-ons really weren't supposed to do much other than just kind of be on the practice squad. So uh, my assumption was I'm supposed to play, so why not go play? What was your uh, impression of Grant Taft the first time you met him? Uh, I actually didn't get to meet him until my second visit, and, and he was uh, – just exactly like he is, just the most uh, down to earth, uh, you know, extraordinary man. Um, it was it was probably a, a great opportunity for me, being 350 miles away from home, to spend that much time with Coach Taft. I spent uh, five years with him. I redshirted one year, and then and then got to spend a year, and and was fortunate enough to be a captain my last year. And so that meant you spent a lot of time with Coach Taft when you were a captain. Um, and the, the life lessons that he taught taught us were just amazing. It, it was it went way beyond football. It, it, it went so much far beyond football. It wasn't. It, it was uh, more uh, just unbelievable. Derek, do you still have that three piece suit that you wore? Uh, you know, trying tr <laughs> trying to sell yourself. For those that don't know, you might have had one of the great uh, pitches for a walk-on player of all time. I mean, uh, can you kind of, for those that don't know, can you explain how you pitched yourself, so to speak? Well, you, you had to, you had to, uh, back then, you know, there wasn't anything like huddle and everything. You had to carry all your film everywhere you went. So uh, I had been touring college, touring universities with my film and showing up at canisters of film trying to figure out how I could get in the door and, uh, and, and showed up and, I kind of was dressed up a little bit and then saw Coach Hicks with, with boots and jeans on. And and uh, I think his comment was, oh, boy, you ought to come down here to Baylor. We'd really love to have you. And uh, <laughs> after, after that, I was hooked. It was, uh, it was just – it was such a uh, great place to be. The funny thing is I didn't have any idea about Baylor football or Baylor history or anything of that nature because, you know, I grew up in, in the shadows of, of OU and OSU. And uh, – uh, I remember one of the first times I was down there, I, I met a guy that he was taking a taking a, a test in a hallway because uh, he'd been out of town or something. And so he was taking a test and they introduced me to him. And I thought, well, I looked at this guy. I could, I mean, I was as big as this guy. I could play. If he can play, I can play. I didn't realize who Mike Singletary was. <laughs> um, so that was probably a little bit over overzealous on my part. So we had some great defensive coaches back then. And, um, uh, it was it was really an honor to play for them and and guys like Corky Nelson and and mm -hmm. Pete Fredenberg and and uh, Robert James and and uh, those guys were just phenomenal. Pete, I hear, just got uh, they're going to name a field after him there at Mary Harden Bay. That was quite an honor for him. Yeah, he's won multiple national titles, retired and incredible. We've had him on a handful of times over the years as well. How tall are you, if you don't mind me asking, or how tall were you when you played? Uh, six two. Okay, what was six your two, but what was your propensity been, for blocking field goals? Um, you know, <laughs> they, they kind of changed the rules a little bit since then. Uh, 
the uh, I blocked a lot of them. The first one I blocked was against Houston, and uh, the, the the guy that was supposed to do it got hurt. And so Coach uh, Pete grabbed me and said, "Hey, can you go do this?" And I said, so "I'll give it a shot." And I blocked the first one. And uh, but I was so excited, I was running off the field and didn't realize the ball was still alive. <laughs> so uh, and, and my uh, excitement of blocking one. But we had uh, we had back then you could you could hit the you could hit the center yeah which is uh, uh i can see why they made that against the rules because that's pretty dangerous but we used to uh kind of do a number or two on the on the center and uh it wasn't hard to block them once you got through there but you had to you had to get your feet just right and your body turned just right it was very much like pass rushing you had to move your hips to be able to make a play Derek, you, you mentioned that you were a walk-on and that you had a place you were looking at maybe at Oklahoma. You, no, you had no scholarship offers, correct, out of high school? Uh, I, I did I did to some smaller schools. Okay. I did to uh, uh, a couple uh, Division II-type schools back then, but nothing uh, nothing from a major university, no. Did you ever visit OU, and, and was that your dream, or was it Oklahoma State? It was Oklahoma State. That uh, my parents were Oklahoma State graduates. My brother was there. Um, it was just kind of it was the, when we grew up. That's where we went to watch ball games, and uh, so I, I had kind of thought it would be Oklahoma State. And uh, I think they came down to they had a, one scholarship left, and they ended up giving it to a, a guy hit from here in Edmond named Paul Blair that that went on to a very successful career in, in the pros and all. So they they probably made a good choice. It was a good choice for me too because. The education that I received there was just phenomenal, second to none. Well, speaking of Oklahoma State, uh, where were you? What were you doing? And what was your reaction uh, as the Big 12 championship game unfolded this past uh, December? Oh, I was in the stands sitting right in the part of a whole bunch of, uh, <laughs> of Pokes fans. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> me and my buddies, we, we, we got tickets to, uh, to a guy that was actually an Oklahoma State fan. So we were sitting right in the middle of the Oklahoma State group. But uh, – it was it was quite a bit of fun. Uh, the uh, oh, uh, I'll tell you a funny story. The next day, I, I came home and I went to dinner with my parents, went to lunch with my parents, and then I went over to uh, one of the sporting goods stores to try to see if I could find some pants. And uh, the pants they had were, were weren't quite the right length. And the guy that was giving them to me was uh, was had he had his OSU hat on, I had my Baylor hat on, and he really didn't want to talk. Uh, he, he he was pretty upset. And I went and tried on these pants, and I came back out, and he said, well, how'd they do? And I said, well, they weren't very good. He said, they were two inches too short. <laughs> 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 and, oh. Uh, oh, boy, that it got a good smile out of him, but he, he wasn't very happy. So I can so, – that's a, quite the – the, the um, I, I guess opposites just being amidst – the feeling that you're feeling and your buddies are feeling at that moment versus the people that you were in the midst of and the feelings that they were feeling at that moment when when that particular play was made. I mean, you talk about joy and it's whatever reaction it was that they were feeling uh, at that time. It was it, it was an amazing game. Um, the, the OSU fans are phenomenal people, so yeah. we were we were really had a good time in between them. I mean, they were they would rise us and we'd rise them and. But it was all lighthearted, and and you know it, when it was over, it was such an emotional win. Uh, it was that was just a crazy. I I don't know how the kid stopped him from getting in the end zone, but it was a that was a play of a lifetime, play of the play of the century, right there. Can you share the story? Uh, your your wife was a, your girlfriend at the time, and how she helped you, and how you were able to find out about you had dyslexia in college and, and how you overcame that. Yes. Uh, my, my girlfriend at the time and now wife uh, was Adrian Hines. Uh, she was a song leader. And, uh, uh, and when I was in school, I had, I had learned but before I got to school that I was dyslexic. I dealt with that throughout my high school time. Uh, and so I knew it was going to be pretty difficult to get there. And stay in school. I didn't realize my parents didn't think I. They, they were kind of concerned I'd ever make it because of the difficulties. Uh, I used to buy two sets of textbooks and send one set home, and my mom would read the read the books on tape and send them back to me on on cassette tapes. So back in the day, that's wow. how far back it was. Uh, because I could listen to the stuff and and and, and follow. It just was hard to read. 
And then whenever it came time to do a, to write a paper, I would do all the outline of the paper and, and come up with everything I wanted to, to say. But uh, I would have to recite it out to my wife, to Adrian, and she would put everything on paper. She would type it out. Uh, she was a, she's phenomenal with English and language. And, and so she would help me get through the, uh, get through the classes. If I hadn't had, hadn't had her help, I would have never made it through school, let alone graduate school. So your, your mother read the books back and put them on cassette tape. And then she, Adrian also was the one that that's awesome, man. That's a great story uh, yeah. as well. I, I had somebody that uh, mentioned your name, Coleman, uh, say, Probably has too big of a heart and will give to anyone. You agree with that? Oh, that that yeah. I've I've, I've been accused of that sometimes, but uh, I, I guess I'd rather I'd rather be that way than the, than the opposite. So uh, it, it, I was just so fortunate to get to play with some of the guys that I did, and mm-hmm. and we we have such a uh, we have a great relationship with with the group now. There's about fifteen of us. 15 or so of us that are on a, on a text chain. I, we literally communicate on the hour, not alone, not alone on the day, but on the hour. And, uh, uh, guys like Mark Addicts and, and Bobby Glass and Walter Abercrombie and, uh, Zona Jones and Greg Nunn and Russell Sheffield. I mean, those guys, uh, Vic Vines, I mean, there's a great group of us that we just kind of through the years got together um, unfortunately, it was kind of after the loss of, of two of our friends when when Kerry Ward passed away and Tom Mickey passed away. It it got kind of got us together as a group, and uh, and we we've maintained that for years now. It's it's been a, a real special thing for me. Derek, last thing you've seen what Baylor's done. They've had the rise two or three different times lately with uh, Art Browse's run and then mm-hmm. Matt Rule, what he did to turn them around, and now what you see with Dave Aranda. What do you think when you watch your alma mater, a place you put your blood, sweat, and tears, turn it around over and over again under different circumstances? Well, I think it's I think it's awesome. Uh, you know, the thing is, is that in this particular time, I know that that the the, the previous two did fantastic things with with the program, but I think we're really set with with Coach Aranda. Um, he reminds me so much of Coach Taft about what he wants to accomplish. And, and his spiritual mission and his mission with the boys and, and, uh, it, 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 it's an, it's amazing to see it. It's, it's an, great to see it. It's nice to know that you can win in college athletics today with that type of attitude. And it's basically the attitude the entire athletic department has. Um, and it, it, it starts at the top and works its way down. And, um, uh, we've got probably the best AD in the country and with Mac. Uh, and the coaches that he's bringing in all across the board, especially in football, uh, they're there for the right reasons. They're there to grow and develop young men. And uh, along the way, if we coach in football and win some games, that's what we want to do. Derek, thanks for your time and sharing your story. We appreciate you very much. Good luck with your business going forward. Have you played Oak Tree since you're from Edmond? Watched the U.S. Open over the weekend. It made me think about Oak Tree when I was uh, introducing you earlier today. Oh yes, yes. No, I grew up just a few. I grew up about a, a mile from that course, and and uh, played there many, many times as a as a as a young person, and and still play there. It's a little hard. It, it's they kind of made it pretty tough, so you don't you don't play it very often without getting your teeth kicked. <laughs> and so, <laughs> yeah, that's a game of golf. It can it can humble you very quickly. Again, Derek, thanks for your time. Congratulations on what you've done and what you're doing. And we appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Thank Derek you Turner, 1981 to 85 with Baylor, played for Grant Taft, All-American, two-time Southwest Conference defensive end, walk-on out of Edmond, Oklahoma, and now runs a business, real estate business, in Edmond uh, Turner and & Company. And glad to have him on. Thanks to Michael Coleman for giving me some of the background that he did on Sikkim 365 Radio. If there's a player from your school, and we have a vast array of a lot of you who are – Watching what we do every day, if there's a player from your school, like an underrated player that you think you might be able to help us get in touch with or I'll start working on it, Paul brought this up earlier, send it to us on the text line, 254-339-1122, and we'll try to find whoever that might be from somewhere like Brigham Young or Missouri or West Virginia or whoever it might be. You know, the guys I was thinking of were, I mean, 